Ooh, welcome to the Sunday Fun Day Podcast. Your hangover never sounded so good. I'm your host, Akil Patterson. Today, I just have the instigator with me. We've got a guest in that he brought. This guy is wild, crazy, and wacky, but he's also an author. And I want to find out today why in the hell anyone wants to be an author. Like, what would make you want to do that? Join us here on the Sunday Funday Podcast right now. We're going to learn about why people do anything creative. All right. So why the hell do you want to be an author? I've had a story that's been brewing in me since I was probably like eight or nine years old. I always loved science fiction, and I, and I think that... Um, there's something about storytelling because I, I have a, a good imagination that when, whether it's reading a book or hearing a, a book be told, I can see the whole story in my mind, right? And so it's like the first time that you read The Hobbit, like what the author brings you to in your mind, and then you go and see like the movie 30 years later, and you're like, holy shit, they actually captured it, like... That's how good the author was, that he was able to describe it, that you could see it, but then someone else could actually translate it later and recreate that. And so I guess there's something about storytelling. You know, it's got its history. It's our story, like, being retold. But what else is it? It's, you know, it's our imagination. And I, I just love feeding into the imagination and seeing where it's going to go. And um, over the years, I've been inspired by certain tales. I loved Forrest Gump. I loved how they wove history into like what he was doing, like oh to make it like yeah, like, like he takes a T-shirt and puts his face on it. It's a smiley face. Says, Have a nice day or whatever, and then like that's a, a a big fad. And it was for a while the orange, you know, yellow face with the smile. That was a fad, right? Yeah. Um, but in my mind, I have a sci- mind's a science fiction tale, and it goes back. And I, but you're not like some baloney eaten like fourth grader that want that's gonna on a science fiction trip a story that you want to tell. Baloney eating. <laughs> well, yeah, I bet you in fourth grade you're probably eating some baloney. I was. But what I'm getting at is you actually have kind of a background in storytelling already that kind of adds to the geneticis of your heredity blanket. Yes. Well, I have a publicist. I have fa- well, my family. So, I mean, oh. my father is a is an author, and he okay. wrote. He, he would write screenplays, and so I would go, and he and his partner they would write stories to turn into movies, right? And they didn't always make it, but it was the idea that they would go and talk about these stories and tell these stories and work them out. I always had, you know, my own like. And I guess it's because I can see things in my mind like they were real, right? Like, I can, I even have dreams that I wake, like, I wake up and I go, what the hell was that? Because I can't remember anywhere in my life where I've been to that landscape. How did my mind recreate something that's so real, but yet nothing I've ever seen before? It blows, it just, it's so intriguing to me. And I want to explore that. I want to be able to go and describe that, talk about it, and tell stories that in, that inspire other people to want to do the same thing. You know? Storytelling is something. I mean, obviously, that's what we do here. We're storytellers in many ways. I mean, we we get to tell stories. We, we listen to people's stories. Sometimes we are the story. Um, so I, I get that. But why writing? Like, because I I feel like it's it's a lost art in many ways. Um, Probably because it is a lost art. Yeah, I, I mean, literally, I, I, I was, I was, I was telling somebody. I said, you know, I could put forty words in the Chat GTP, and it will spit out something. Like it may not always be the greatest story, but it'll spit out a story almost instantly. Like we're we're losing the the ability to write and to craft uh, good narratives. And I mean, even the way people email today has a lack of depth. Like, I remember reading a book uh, when I was a kid, 
and everything just seemed like it was old English to me. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was like, but it was from like 1890, and it was a woman who was writing her husband a letter. Uh, there was a series of, of letters in this book that we had to read in, in high school, and she was writing her husband a letter, just telling him about you know what the home was like. Oh my dearest Jonathan. Was he like a way or off? Yeah, like something like that. You're I talking think. like World War One, maybe. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, it was just her right. He was away working somewhere else. Got it. And she was just writing a letter and it just seemed very old time. You're like, man, she gets very descriptive in how she writes, and it's just a letter to her husband. And someone saved that letter. Now I'm like, is anybody saving my emails? Because they're not going to be in history lessons. Right. <laughs> Please refer to what our conversation was before, you dumb hag. Like, those sort of things. Like, <laughs> people aren't writing. There's no, there's no, um, so if you are a writer and you were given the gift of writing and the ability to develop story in your mind that you can then effectively communicate to an audience in a way that, the best writers do it. It's not self-serving, where the audience feels they're they're there, right? They're just over your shoulder as you're going through the jungle, or or that first kiss, or that first I- incredible experience of a, a win of a football game. All these things have been documented in stories. So I think if you have that gift, and I think a lot of people do, it's like a lot of gifts. I think that people just don't exercise it regularly, and I think. Post-COVID, there's a lot of searching going on post-COVID. And I think it's interesting that we're finding nostalgia in storytelling. Or I think we are because if I'm part of this podcast and I believe that there's a value in shared story because through shared story, you get emotion, you get perspective, you get understanding. You know, if when Akil tells a story about maybe being younger and being uh, super excited for uh, social engagement with other kids to the point where maybe he was so excited that the other kids were overwhelmed by the energy that was coming out of them, right? He's also probably three times the size of the normal like fourth grader at the time. But then all of a sudden, you find out that like a lot of kids can't handle that. So that doesn't necessarily get shared. That light doesn't get shown as bright as it could be. Maybe you don't get invited to those birthday parties because you're you're too much. Your light shines. Your energy's too big. Too, br- too bright. We've talked about this before, but effectively it's like I told the story that people didn't invite me to parties because their parents were like, yo, your kid's got way too much ADHD. He's going to be all over the place. It's better that he doesn't come, and they would tell it to my parents, and then he'd be like, well, that happened to me, and then we found out that it happened to a lot of people. They just didn't share that story because they always felt like it was just, well, it was isolated or just retrospective. It was just something that happened to me, and I just had to deal with it. It was like, no, a lot of people had to deal with it because... It happened. It happened. It did happen, and it's interesting because there's different sides of that. Like, some parents, I mean, and I get, you take that kind of personally, right? Like... The child is a representation yeah. of you. And so if you take them and you drop them off and they act inappropriately or they too their energy's too big, then what are you? What's wrong with you? Oh yeah. Right? So you know, the way that I internalized that is I made sure my son was there, right? But mm. I was there. Mm. Oh, so you'd be with him like interesting. All right. I would be there. And I and and my son actually had uh, he's on the spectrum, he has autism. Okay. My oldest. And so he learns to like look for for Social response cues. in me. He would look at me, and I would just you know give him cues, and he yeah. would know like what to to do. And then there's sometimes I just let him go, let him be, you know, like put your freak on, dude. Who cares? Right? <laughs> I, I actually liked that about him that he could go to school and not care that his T-shirt came up high, right? Like uh. you're exposing your fat belly son go get a bigger shirt but i love this one it's pokemon whatever i don't care He's like i'm not arguing about this you, you want to go that's how you want to go and you're okay at school like that all the power to you because i could never drop that i had all, all times thinking how i looked in front of my peers he's clueless and he's to that. he's clueless and doesn't care not only is he clueless he's oblivious like he just doesn't care 
about what other it's kind people of, there's think. There's kind of some beauty in that. There is a beauty. It's the same thing when you hear this: the ignorance is bliss. Oh, yeah. It's so true. If you were ignorant, it would be blissful because you wouldn't have to think about things, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the, the problem that we live in in society. Like, we have so much thought in everything. It's exhausting. Oh, my God. What do we do with all this thought, dude, all the time? We have to process it. And this is why this is good. I'm glad that you have a show where you guys come talk. Like, come talk. Oh, yeah. Because guys don't know how to talk. Yeah. Guys don't talk things through. Women talk. Women have been doing it far longer. For decades. We, we've been talking shit. They've been they yeah. sit, they talking sit, shit. Well, because they, it's, they it's because they sit in their circles, you know, totally. they, and they have all day to just... Judgy. Blah, 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 blah. And they can, they can. They can talk shit, and it doesn't matter. Right, they they, they, they just go whatever. See that shit the next day, they, they, hey. Hey, <laughs> it's always the high pitched, like high energy pageant. Hello, yeah, hi. Right? <laughs> like, are you interviewing for but a pageant? Well, well, while we were off hunting and doing the more serious work, or we had a fucking uh, game on a video. If you're a game, well, that's yeah. a whole, that's a new thing. No but man's hunt anymore. but it, it, it's the way that it is though is structural. Like, there's still the when we're the way we are, we're not used to communicating. On that level and they've been forcing it on us for a long time to communicate to communicate communicate and we just don't talk know about how to no we don't know how to but you it? know what I, I always said that the, what I really liked and one of the reasons I started this podcast was because I was seeing a generation of young people that didn't know how to talk to each other and it was bad like I mean I have friends I I, don't, I disagree with them just about everything they say doesn't mean I don't love them doesn't mean yeah. I don't care about them it's like Mark will say some stuff. We're like, all right, and you move on because it's like that's his opinion. We disagree. We don't mm -hmm. care. Move on. That's yeah, there's all like you no should. name calling or animus after. I don't have to because it's, it's, it's well. First of all, that's a waste of energy. Right. People yeah. that spend that much time and energy into trying to defend their position, I'm like, what are you defending? Yeah, let it go. Let it go. Like the person said their piece, you said theirs, you disagree with them, you can go to something else. That's right. Like that I I had to, like I said, I had to talk with somebody recently, you know. We we were told that we couldn't talk about politics, religion, and money at the dinner table. Like you leave those three things alone. <laughs> you politics, talk about politics, religion, and money, the first three conversations. And, and guess <laughs> what? Those are now the first three things that people want to ask you, like, so uh do you go to church? You're a little intrusive. Oh, uh, do do you follow? Do you do you have a job? Jesus, what we're getting into money now. It's <laughs> like, and then like, huh? Who'd you vote for? Like, okay, now we're all gonna sit here and have to endure our stupid conversations instead of just being able to say that, hey, I agree with so and so on this point, or I agree with you. It's a zero sum game. Everything now has to be zero sum. It's got to be all or nothing. It's like that's not the way the world actually works. No, it's compromising. You know what? Sometimes it's okay to. It's like it's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a disagreement yeah, because you and guys to not walk on a bunch of other stuff. And, both like cars and, and women you walk away and not agree. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to solve it where you're both in agreement. Yeah. You throw the whole pizza out because one piece doesn't taste good. Uh, the whole pizza gets tossed. Well, I mean, I'm try not, another. You try another piece. Uh, Come well, on. let's be. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be very real with you. If my pizza is messed up and I take that one bad slice, I'm sending it back. The whole pie. Be. Because if you eat any more, they won't give you a refund. Okay, that's a fair. That's fair. You see, that's why that analogy doesn't work. No, I and I have. <laughs> it's I like, got you. They're not going to give you a fucking refund. I got you. Re uh, refund aside, I guess what I'm saying is I think that people put too much their the percentage their percentages of where they're putting their time and energy are misplaced. Yes. Uh, real quick, is there fuego? I don't know. Well, it's your house. I think you dropped for it. I think you dropped it. I probably dropped it on your couch. Yeah, you dropped it on the couch. Go ahead, Mark. Leave during the middle of the show. I will. Worried more about the fire than, than he is the conversation. Uh, you know, in 10 years, you're going to think back on this. In 10 years, I'm not going to think about anything that I just said to you. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be one of those things where you just don't. I just won't. I won't think about it, folks. I just won't.
You're I'm never going to think about these things. Not going to think about them. I'm not. And, and and that's why that's why even when I argue with people, I don't think about it. I'm like, oh, when I say something to somebody, I just say it. Not be rude or disrespectful. I just say it. And then if they agree, they agree. If they don't, they don't. They can tell me that they don't agree. And they can tell me why they don't agree. And then I can literally leave it right there. What That's percentage of done. these people do you think want to be right? Everybody wants to be right. So 100%. Everybody wants to be right. Nobody wants to have a conversation. Everyone just wants to be right. And you know what? Pretty much. Oftentimes, it's the I, way our it's kind of the way that our uh, our conversations are set up. That you like, they're set up for someone to be right and someone to be wrong. So why we even talk to each other that way? Like we we, we forget that there's a, a way of communicating that's not about right and wrong. It's about just sharing information, right? And it's like how we address it ourselves even, mm -hmm. right? How can we say it without making other people feel like they're wrong for it, right? How you, how you lay the icing on the cake. Yes, how you lay the icing on the cake. I don't like icing. You don't like icing? Then you have a cake that has no icing on it. It's fine. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with just straight shooters. I, I <laughs> like it when people tell me, tell me like it is. Yeah, I don't, let, let's I, hurry this up. I cannot, because my time is valuable. My time is money. Yeah. And I think those are like the, the number one thing that like, you know, because I had to do telemarketing for a spell in my early years that I, when so I get a call from a salesperson, I almost want to give them a moment because I know what it's like to be on the other side and like need to get through to somebody to gain points, time, whatever on the backside. But then you're just like, you know, get on with it. I know you have a script, but what the hell are you gonna want? Just tell me what the fuck you want, I right? Like, I, I, if you could just get to the boom, I'll tell you right now whether I'm interested or not. And as soon as you say Marriott, Las Vegas, sorry, I, I can't go. I'm not going. Thanks. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get off the I phone. I forgot. I had it. I had a, one of those similar telemarketing jobs where they they stick you in the basement with a headset and a computer that has the script on it, and God, you got... How fast did you go off script? Well, no. So, first off, like, the, the, the computer won't let you go off script. So, like, it was one of those basement telemarketing places where you'd be in the room, you had a little headset on, and it was auto-calling people. And if you got through to somebody, you'd have to start right into it. Like, well, good morning, Jennifer. And my name's uh, ja, ja, blah, and I'm here with, you know, selling, you know, Amway, you know, products. And if you don't know what Amway is... And, you're, and the whole thing said, don't let them talk, get them to yes. Like the script would be like, just keep reading, get them to yes, and then you can go to the next page. Did you have a mirror in front of you where you had to smile? Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Or a monitor that you could see yourself? Well, it was a computer. I guess I could, but this was, this was, this was like, again, I was making like $7.25 an hour, but for everyone you got through, like you got a nickel. So you get like a, and look, for everything, every script you got through, you got a nickel on top of it. Okay. So like if you got through the whole spiel, you can make like an extra two bucks. And they didn't have to buy it. They didn't have to buy it. They okay. Just, okay. They just get it through because that meant that they could track it and they can give the client like. So you're making 9.35. If. Got it. If. But again, you had to get through the whole script. Yeah, because you were delivering the, the script that the client wanted delivered. Yep. To the potential How customer, were you? whether they bought it or not, the fact that they listened to the whole script meant that they received part of the programming. It's almost like advertising. It is advertising. Yeah. And the whole point is to get through the script so that the words, the specific words that they spent a lot of a money, money to, to get, get delivered because those are trigger words. And you only have to hear those trigger words seven to eight times before something registers in the brain. Yep. And all of a sudden, now you're thinking about that product. So like but they don't stop. Like You think like, oh, once you get it, done, aren't you done? No, Coca-Cola will spend billions in advertising every year yep. because they don't want you ever to forget Coca-Cola, right? They don't want you to forget about it. So they put it everywhere, 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 all, all the time. You did, I mean, this is like, this, this matches up. Yeah, because that's what you had to do. And I think that's when you get good at like telling stories because 
it's it's you get your cadence down better. Uh, you have that ability, like you also know voice inflection, like how to make something sound exciting versus something that is not that exciting. And then you learn how to get through the script because you have to, because there's money attached to it. Like it. I didn't want to make seven twenty five. I ended up quitting. Just FYI. Well, you got any experience. I did get You learned experience. reflection, you learned scripting, you learned storytelling. I learned all that good craziness. And at the end of the day, <laughs> I was still like bewildered. I was like, oh shit. This was this was this was this was it was good to learn what marketing was about. Cause you know, because phone marketing, telemarketing is no longer the way it was back in, you know, back in two thousand. That shit was bad. Kids, you don't know, thank God for the do not call list, because that junk was bad. Yeah, you don't know. Landlines, forget about it. Oh, man. Oh, I, I called, uh, I did fundraising for the alumni fund for Portland State University, which was cold calling, cold calling. alumni. But they're alumni. You yeah, don't at know least these they, people at no, all. No, no, that That's not only, even. You're right. Yeah. The only connection you had was that you went to school there, and that was gold. That was a great entry, yeah, soft amazing. landing yeah. or approach, and it was their alma mater, right? Yeah. So, but. So I, I do agree. I didn't get the I didn't get the one oh one that people got when it was just an actual true cold call. But still, you, I, I I I get it. You you made that style your own and sometimes you only took if you were really good, you only took pieces of that script and you created your own. Because we didn't have this monitor <laughs> monitored back then. So it's just yeah, it's I think interesting. I, again, this is like, but it was a client paid for this. I think that's the big difference is like, yeah. somebody spent a lot of money to write this script. You're going to stick to this script right. because it works. And when you get through the script, they'll pay you more yeah. because you you just delivered their, message. their marketing yeah, message. You're right, you're right, you're right. And you delivered it to them through the phone line, right? Which is very personal. It's, it it's even more personal than the TV. It's more personal right? now than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to have their ear, to have their attention that way was always a really big deal. I mean, we had, I worked for a telemarketing company that was pretty big um, and they had big clients, but I hated being intrusive because when you call, you're always calling somebody and they're like, I'm in the middle of dinner, I'm in the middle of something. You know, please stop calling me or whatever. And you're like, you're supposed to like, go, uh, no. And I'm not hanging up until you listen to every word I have to say, right? Like, the, the, be the truth. Of that, but no, yeah. well, the, the, I'm, to be truthful, that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. It's like whatever you you're do. You're not talking about a project problem. You're just talking about like if you're trying to sell them something. Yeah, and if I'm trying wow, to sell okay. them something, yeah, because it doesn't matter whether they buy it or not. It's if I get through the script. Is whether I get paid or not. Okay. And every time you cut me off, I'm gonna call you back. I'm just gonna put you back on That's my dogged. call. I'm gonna put you back on my call list. Not at that time though. I'll be smart about it. I'll call you the next day, an hour earlier. You're like when he picks up. You're like Gary. Yeah. Gary's the first. I'm day. sorry about our conversation <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Sorry, we, I caught you in the middle of dinner. Yeah, I'm sorry I caught you at dinner. Let's let you know, but I just wanted to get through this because I know that this is very important to your life. And and let me just say, right now is a great opportunity for you to buy this blah 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 for nine ninety nine. Here's what it is: this company is going to give you everything that you need. And guess what? I'm going to be there for you when you need me, just like right now. So when you call and you get the first delivery, you can call us right back. Somebody from this office will be here to. I'm ready to buy, aren't you? Already yeah, did. like that's did, what you did, get. Did, did, yeah. And then at that point, they're like. All right. And then sometimes I would I would lie in the end be like, listen, you know how this goes. I got to get you through. Let me get you on the phone with my manager real quick. Hey, Todd, I got one for you. Um, let me get you on the phone with my manager real quick. He's going to walk you through. Todd is the fucking guy sitting next to you who does your job, too. Like, you guys just <laughs> right, take each other's right. call. You bounce back and forth. And then he writes it down. And he goes, just want to let you know you just made a kill. Good sell. <laughs> And you're like, and they don't even actually have to buy <laughs> well, it. There's no manager. There's, you just need to get through it and they need to get your information and they need to be able to contact you because you, whatever they're selling Gosh. you, they know that you need. At some point, you need this product and they're just making sure that when, what a farm. when it comes back, you're going to buy it from them. Product what or service, farm. whatever it is. Yeah. Product or service, yeah. 
Uh, I think one time I, I used to sell those prepaid legals. Nice. Prepaid legal was oh, that's a good money maker. That is a good money maker. It was a good money maker because everybody was getting those DUIs back in the day. Now we got Uber and Lyft. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I you, wonder what that cut down in on like. A prepaid legal services. Probably, I mean, it's interesting because it's, it's a fourteen thousand dollar offense. It's a yeah, it's just so a trade off. That money went somewhere else. It yeah. just got right. shuffled from one industry to the other. Yeah, yeah. Now it's in you know healthcare or something. Who knows? But it was that was a big that was a big money maker. Prepaid legal. Prepaid legal. Oh yeah, prepaid legal services. Because people were going to sue you. No, they sold it to realtors. <laughs> they they sold probably it to realtors. That's true, so that you could do it. And then, like, the guy was like, what he was selling, he's like, if you get a traffic ticket, I'll be your attorney, and I'll handle the case for you. And, right. I mean, everybody's ears just perked up when he said that. And they said all their questions were about, like, well, I have a friend that got pulled over. You know, it's like, yeah, and prepaid legal services are just, they were just dope back in... And again, it was like having a lawyer on retainer. Yes. Everybody wanted to feel fancy. Like, so there was different levels. Like, You're right. The company that I worked for, and this was when I was doing juvenile um, probation. Again, I don't know. Let me talk to my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, let me go talk to somebody. You're like, but they, they gave you the prepaid legal services because they wanted you, if you were ever in trouble yourself, to be able to call someone because mm. you, your job was dependent on you not going to jail. Right, showing up. Yeah, so if you didn't, need, if you don't go to jail, then we're gonna have you safely tucked away somewhere, and we're gonna help support you, and you won't go to prison. Gotcha. They have these, and that's what prepaid legal was for the. the but they made us; they gave it to us for free. But then you're like, well, how much did this company? And then it was a state agency. And they're like, how much did the state agency actually spend on this shoot, this stuff? I would love to know that. Number. It was free. It was probably exorbitant. Yeah, probably somebody's buddy. That's probably what it was. Somebody's buddy wanted it to do that. Yeah, oh. you know how it goes. Oof, I am sweating. Uh, you know what that means, folks? That means we're coming to the end here. Thank you for joining us here on the Sunday a Fun Day. I appreciate you, brother. John Hargrove, you're a blast. Thank yeah. you. When you finally write that book, let us know about it. But either way, we'd love to have you back on. Maybe, maybe we can get him for a kickback. The kickbacks are more fun. Kickbacks are more fun. Uh, but we're in the studio. It's always like well, you can only have so many people. And Juice is still taking care of the baby. Uh, the baby episode, we swear, is coming one of these days. Who knows? Maybe soon. But either way, folks, thanks for joining us here on the Sunday Fun Day podcast. The hangover never sounded so good. Deuces. <laughs>